So you want to be able to solo hell dive missions. Well, cadet, you came to the right place. Welcome to the SES Emperor of Democracy. Today, we're going to be raising the flag of Super Earth on Fact Bay to prove to those socialist animals that they will never destroy our way of life. To do this, we're going to be relying on a nasty combination of the flamethrower and orbital gas strike. We're going to be smoking those bugs out of their holes and bathing them in the fires of liberty. These two weapon systems are able to destroy almost anything the bugs have, with one exception. Bile Titans. To deal with these overweight cockroaches, we're going to be relying on Eagle One loaded up with 500 kilogram bombs. Once you get the timing right, this is the only stratagem you'll ever need to knock those Bile Titans down a peg or two. Lastly, our shield pack is going to let us keep spewing flames at the enemy without needing to worry about a hunter poking us in the butt while we do it. For our primary, we'll be bringing the Breaker Incendiary because it's a fantastic weapon at dealing with fast enemies like hunters or shriekers and absolutely wrecks crowds of these smaller foes. Our sidearm is going to be the grenade pistol to help close up those those bug holes. We're also bringing impact grenades to deal with any biospheres that might show up or to just hunk explosives at whatever stupid bug is in our way. Lastly, we'll be gearing up in the CEO 7 demolition armor because we need to be quick on our feet and more grenades is always a blessing from Liberty herself. Now that you know the loadout, let's drop into combat. For those of you that are new to my channel, my primary objective in these videos is to help y'all get a little better at the game and kind of learn from my mistakes and just what I've learned in my time as a solo helldiver. And to do that, I like to include a couple of general lessons at the start of each video. So for today, we're going to be talking about using terrain to our advantage, when to fight versus when to retreat, and just some general tips on how to battle the bugs. I've always been a bot player at heart, so trying to get these solo full clears for y'all against the bugs, it taught me a lot about the enemy and how best to destroy them. We're coming up on our first bug nest, and I think this is a perfect opportunity to talk about how to use the terrain. These bug nests are almost always kind of depressed into the ground, so what I want to do is drop that orbital gas track on them, and wait till they kind of come over the edge. They don't usually, they aren't usually able to come over any part of the bug pit, we'll call it. So you can kind of find where they're going to come up and just situate yourself to burn them out as they appear over the lip of the bug hole. I find this to work really, really well, and I'm going to be talking about plenty of other examples throughout the game of how to use terrain. You can even use it to kind of dodge bile titans or to just lose them, like get rid of their tracks so they can't follow you, that kind of stuff. So there's a lot of different ways to use terrain, and I feel like, whereas with the bots, it's mostly about, you know, peeking in and out of cover, using line of sight to block vision and kind of lose aggro, that kind of stuff. Against the bugs, it's a little bit different, because they're just relentless and they're fast. So it's kind of hard to just lose the bugs like you would with the bots. But you can still use terrain to your advantage, because whenever you, like, round a corner or something, it's always going to force the bugs to come all at you in basically a single file line. And as long as you keep checking around and maintain that situational awareness, you're going to be able to just know when you can fight and stay in the same spot versus when you got to kind of move around and look for a better position to engage. Now, with these Bile Titans, you're going to be seeing this throughout the game. I probably killed 10 of these fuckers while I'm playing, but... Uh, right there, the 500 kilo actually hit the Bile Titan, and for some reason, unless it lands directly on their head, if it hits them in any other spot, it they don't die, y'all. So, I didn't want to waste another 500 kilo on them, so I decided I'm just going to lose them, and this is another good example of how to use terrain. So, if you find terrain that the Bile Titan can't just step over, he's going to have to go around it. So, I check behind me, I see he doesn't have eyes on me, so he doesn't know exactly where I am just yet. So I'm going to try to round the corner on this next cliff, and once I do, I know that that Bile Titan will de-aggro and I don't have to deal with him. That way I don't got to waste another 500 kilo. I do one more little look back and I notice he's not there before I see this Shrieker up in the sky. Now as soon as I see these flying turds, I know that there's got to be a Shrieker nest nearby. Obviously because I saw the Shrieker, but whenever Shriekers appear, it's because you entered into a certain range of their nest. They don't need to see or hear you to know where you are as long as you're close enough to the nest. So with that knowledge, I know that I need to make a push for this Shrieker nest, preferably before the next bug breach. But I do want to clear out these enemies. I don't want to be too hasty with this. I want to make sure that I'm preserving my lives. I'm preserving my stratagems and all that good stuff. And as soon as I see this Bile Titan, I know I've kind of got to turn tail and haul ass for a little bit. Because my Eagle is on cooldown, and that's really the only effective way I have at killing this dude. 
Now, I could lose him again in the terrain, but, you know, it's more fun taking out a Biotitan, y'all. I love just whacking these giant freaking cockroaches, and Eagle One is the perfect tool to do that. But I had to wait a little bit for her to come off the cooldown. As soon as she does, I'm going to line up the shot by... I make sure that I don't have it on... I, there's no terrain on either side that this missile could come down and hit. Or this bomb. So I wait, line it up, and usually what you do is you wait till that laser beam from the stratagem is like right lower than the Bile Titan's head. You kind of want it to land directly beneath them. And that's how you get that nice one shot. Now, I'm throwing my resupply here because I know that I'm going to have to fight in this area quite a bit. There's been a bug breach called in, there's shriekers everywhere, and I know that I need to be able to clear out these enemies before I go deal with the shrieker nest. Because if all these guys are following me, it's going to be really hard for me to call in a hell bomb to deal with the shrieker nest. And I already used one of my 500 kilos, so I can't rely on those to take out the nest. So, more than likely, I'm going to need to use a hell bomb. So I drop down my supplies, I uh, get fully supplied up, and I just keep fighting these enemies as they spawn. Well, they already spawned, but as they kind of trickle in towards me. But I'm making my way towards the Shrieker Nest. This is a good example of when to fight versus when to retreat. I'm doing a bit of both here, a little fight and retreat, but because they were all funneled into that little crevasse, I don't know what you call it, the break in the wall, uh, I could use my Breaker Incendiary and my Flamer to great effect. But now that there's nothing immediately chasing me, I can run up to the Shrieker Nest and I'm going to plant down that Hell Bomb. Now for those of you that don't know, this is one of those tips I was talking about. If you are prone, a Shrieker cannot damage you. I don't know why, but they just can't dip low enough, y'all. So even if there's a hundred of them, as long as you're crawling on your belly, they won't be able to do nothing to you. They also, to my knowledge, cannot damage a Hell Bomb. Like, the, every other bug can, but I don't think that the Shriekers are able to, because I've never had a Shrieker, like, dive in and blow up my Hell Bomb. Now here, this is going to be a bit of a sticky situation, because I need to stay here and fight these guys for a little bit, so that I can be certain the Hell Bomb's going to go off, but I get hit one too many times, fall off the cliff, and die. I was able to buy enough time for the Hell Bomb to go off and give me this glorious view of blowing up this frickin' infestation of flying rats. And if you like the sight of that Shrieker Nest going up in flames, consider also liking the video. And maybe drop a subscription if you've been enjoying the content so far. I really do appreciate it and it helps the channel grow just a little bit more. I'm always looking to improve my content because I feel it's my responsibility to get all current and future cadets and helldivers up to speed on how to best deal with the enemies of democracy, which is why I show y'all how to do it solo in Helldive. But for now, let's get back to it, grab up our resupply, and head on towards the next objective. To be perfectly honest with y'all, I've never done this mission before. Not since I was a wee cadet myself. But, since Super Earth wants me to raise a flag to tell the enemies of democracy to go fuck themselves, I'm gonna do it. And I figured, now, uh, I'm real sorry if some of y'all have done this mission a lot and you cringe to death when I run away from it and it kind of resets itself. I'm sorry, I did not know this is my first time ever doing it. But my thought process was, this is kind of a defend the strong point type of objective. So I wanted to get on as high ground as possible, which happens to be this tiny little rock sticking up out of nowhere. A big old sandstorm comes in, so I'm not able to see shit. But I do know from my radar that there was something in that direction. So whatever it is, I really hope that it's dead now with that orbital strike and a few breaker incendiary volleys into the darkness. But this is actually where, I don't know y'all, fighting the bugs and fighting the bots become, became very evidently different to me in this particular moment. Because I'm trying to use my terrain to, you know, get a good angle on the bug breach, but even though it's got a sandstorm going on and I can't see anything, the bugs seem to always know where I am. So I'm just trying to do my best to funnel them in through some kind of a choke point, like right there between those two big rocks. So anything big and nasty that comes through, I'll be able to just melt with my flamer. But because of the extremely limited visibility, I do need to be very cautious of where I am and what's around me, because I can't see anything, y'all. Uh, so what I'm doing is sticking towards some kind of cover or terrain, just so I know that the bugs can't just pop out and surround me, because I found that's when I die the most often. But right here, I kind of make a mistake. I should not have just tried to run through those. I really should have stemmed myself as soon as I took damage before doing that, or just doubled back and gone the other way. But again, I drop right back in, get back to it. And 
I'm sorry to keep mentioning it, but because of the sandstorm and I can't see where I am, I have to ping my weapons and I go back, grab them up, and then I notice for some reason the bugs can't see me now. They had no problem just a second ago, so I'm just going to stand by this flag and kind of hope for the best. But look at this freaking hive guard. He's just standing less than two feet from me and isn't able to see me. So how is it that all of those bugs were able to just kind of sneak right up on my ass and tear me to pieces? I don't know. If y'all know, let me know in the comments, because I'm still learning the bugs, and obviously they are not my favorite enemy. But I do like killing them. They do die real nice, so... Yeah, I'm always looking to get better at just slaughtering these worthless animals. But now the sandstorm is over and I can fucking see again, it's pretty easy to just melt down the last of these critters and get that flag of Super Earth raised high. And this is where I kind of learned, like, oh, the Super Earth flag is dependent on enemies not being near it. So again, I'm learning as as y'all watch this. This is I, I had no clue what I was supposed to be doing or really how this worked. I just knew I was supposed to stand there and let the flag raise. And in hindsight, I really should have brought the salute emote just to pay my proper respects. But I catch the side of this radar tower in the distance, and if any of y'all have dived solo before, you know what a blessing radars can be. So I'm going to throw my gas strike at them. Hopefully that'll kill any small bugs that are in the area. And I do see those two chargers, so I run up to this small rock, let him bonk his head into it, his buddy does the same, before I melt his leg off, which, by the way, I'm pretty sure that if a charger full-on collides into something, it, it, it affects them in some way. I, I feel like they do... I kill them quicker after that or something? I don't really know, y'all. But I did want to mention that when you're dealing with chargers and you're using a flamer, uh, you need to be mindful of... The fact that enemies in this game, whether it's the bots or the bugs, they have different health pools for different parts of their body. So if I'm trying to flame down a charger and I start on his right leg, or like right here, and I would switch to his left leg, it would take me twice as long to kill him because I didn't do enough damage to either one to actually finish the giant walking rock off. So just be aware of that when you're flaming up a, or when you're charbroiling up a crusher. Make sure that you're targeting the same leg with the stream. And if you notice the fire like bouncing off of it, that means it's kind of being deflected. It, it, it's not really doing the full damage. It might still affect him with the burning, but you just want to make sure that that stream of fire is going directly into the charger's leg. And that's how you deal with them. But here I noticed that this patrol was not going away and that I'd probably have to fight it. And they call in a bug breach, but... First off, I gotta barbecue up this crush or this uh, charger, and any of his friends that happen to be walking up the ramp are gonna get it too. I do see a bile titan spawn, so I'm gonna duck on the other side of this rock, throw that orbital gas strike on top of the bug breach, and hopefully that'll kill off any other little dudes that are around while I deal with this bile titan. But I do. Oh, and also this is another thing I mentioned in the bot videos, but the orbital gas strike, even if it doesn't kill the enemies outright, like these bigger guys, like brood commanders or hive guard. It does weaken them pretty substantially, so, you know, you can finish them off pretty quick with any other weapon. Now, here, I'm trying to deal with this Bile Titan, and I get struck with a... I don't know what the hell. This is just some really bad luck. I feel like that was dead on target. Maybe it was a hair too close to his head, but it doesn't even really look like he took much damage. So, I try to finish him off with the Breaker by breaking his fucking puke sacks, whatever these are called. Bugs are gross, y'all. But uh, it doesn't really end up working, and I kind of figure I'm just going to have to kite this guy around while I do the radar objective. In hindsight, it probably would have been better for me to go back into the terrain and just lose him so I didn't have to worry about him. But I wasn't thinking it through, and I was kind of frustrated because that 500 kilo it really seemed like it should have killed him, and that was my last one, so I had to wait. So I throw a gas strike at him, but because this planet has orbital scattering on it, Tragedy strikes. The gas cloud lands way too close, and because I was stuck in the animation of turning the tower, I could not stem myself and get out in time, so I just killed myself straight up. Very embarrassing, but I have pride as a hell diver, and I'm not going to cut out a dumb death just to save a little bit of face. But this hunter patrol comes in, so I take him out with the incendiary breaker. I hope this is a great example for y'all of why this gun is so freaking good against the terminids. You can also use the uh, breaker spray and pray, or even the regular breaker, but just shotguns in general are amazing at fighting these enemies. I also tried to kill him with the flamethrower once I picked it back up, but as you can see, it, it doesn't do any damage. So he's tanked 
a bunch of shots from a breaker, full tank from a flamer, and all kinds of other bullshit. So I just find a good position to watch as this circus clown freak of an animal gets blown the hell up. Thankfully, now that he's dead, I'm able to just press the button, radar stations enabled, and I can take a quick, quick gander at my mini-map to see what's going on. I see there's a stalker nest way off in the distance, but because I'm kind of going in a counterclockwise motion around the map, I'm not going to worry about that right now. Instead, we're going to go deal with this giant bug hive. I see a lot of other solo hell divers avoiding these particular objectives, but Commissar Kai ain't no wimp. I'm going to go ahead and take this thing out with some careful planning and some, well, str strategy. I throw down that resupply and I take note of the rock that I threw it behind because sometimes I forget where it is, but I know that I'm basically going to be circling around the edge of this thing, so I drop in that orbital gas track and everything in this bug nest is going to have to come up this particular ramp. I mean, they could go up the other way, but I don't think the bugs are smart enough to do that. So since I got a gas track behind them and the fires of democracy in front of them, these bugs are in for a really bad time, and I'm just waiting until I can kill everything that like started in there deal with this bug breach because we're going to be using this terrain to our advantage nothing can hit us from the left we're pretty certain there's nothing on our right so the only thing we got to focus on is what's directly in front of us and i am kind of eyeing the bug nest i'm trying to figure out exactly how i want to deal with it now that most of the enemies are dead and the bug breach is almost over but i'm just going to keep flaming on there's no reason to move from a good spot if you don't have to now this charger is going to give me a reason, so I will end up moving. And for some reason with the shield pack, occasionally they take you for a bit of a ride. But if that ever happens, just dive out of it and you, usually you won't get hurt. I mean, I can't guarantee it, y'all, but I've never been hurt when that happens. I've had some real rodeo moments before, though. So we go in, now that all the enemies are up there and distracted, and we start popping bug holes. And the way I like to deal with these big nests is rather than just running around like, you know, a headless chicken... Instead, I'm going to focus on one half of the bug nest at a time, and as soon as there's too many enemies or I hear something real scary coming, I go right back up these ramps so I can use this terrain and this choke point to my advantage. It's going to be a little bit harder with this Bile Titan here, so I need to deal with him first. So I want to make a little bit of space, I'm going to wait for him to come out and throw the 500 kilo. But for some liberty forsaken reason, this stupid stilt-wearing motherfucker just decides to walk right past it and my 500 misses again i don't know y'all i really think that one was just bad luck i don't know why he didn't turn towards me like he's supposed to but hey whatever it's fine so i drop back in the bug hole and i'm just clearing out all the rest of the bug holes that were on the right side of the bug nest whatever it's kind of relative to where i'm standing i see there's only three left so i'm gonna loop back around i'm gonna go back for my resupply because i'm getting a little bit low on grenade pistol ammo and i'm gonna need that to clear out those bug holes i mean i throw impact grenades at them but i don't know i feel like grenade pistol is a little bit more reliable at that job i mean impacts obviously will do it but eh you know grenade pistols gives me the option of being a little bit further away and it's a little bit more accurate but I keep throwing these orbital gas tracks over there at that ramp for the same reason I've been telling y'all all the time. Bugs want to come at me, they either got to go up, they either have to go up that ramp or they got to come down it. So just tossing that orbital gas track over there is going to give me a lot of space. Make sure that all these little bugs are dead. You see, it gets like 16 kills, something like that. And then I have to duck back out of here because I notice there's two charges chasing me, and that bio titan's still there. And I see there's one bug hole left, so I'm going to go around the what is it? west side of the bug hole yeah go around the west side of the bug hole kill anything that's over here there's quite a few of these critters around for some reason i'm not quite sure where these guys came from this might be a patrol that spawned because i don't think it was a bug breach but uh i get a little bit of a sticky situation i'm kind of i think i ran into two hunter patrols there so i gotta back up and kind of do my fight and retreat thing i know i can't stand my ground and pull out my flamer here because i can't really see what's around me i don't have any terrain nearby so if I stand in that spot and fight, eventually something's going to get behind me. By the way, I like those two chargers that crashed into each other. Freaking hilarious. My 500 kilos coming back up, but i got to keep focused on what I'm doing here. I'm not here to just kill these bugs. I'm here to clear the map and get rid of all these stupid terminated structures that they shat out here. So we clear out that last bug hole, deal with any hunters that are chasing us because they can slow us and stuff like that. And I just kind of run away. I do get this Bile Titan to kind of follow me up a little bit, but since he can't vomit anymore, I had to bait him to stomp around on the ground. 
And, uh, yeah, anyway, finally was able to blow him up. That was the same Bile Titan, y'all, that was there that entire time I was clearing the buck nest. So I was real happy that he was dead. Finish off the charger. We're moving into the next part of the primary objective. So, like usual, when I know I have to stand and fight somewhere, I drop down that resupply. I want to make sure I have enough ammo, grenades, and all that stuff to kill these waves of enemies as they come at me. While y'all wait for me to get set up and for the bugs to start showing up, let's talk a little bit about how to defend a position. Especially when you're using the flamer, you really don't want to have a big wide open space where you have to kind of jerk the flamer back and forth in order to get the most effectiveness out of it. So right in this area, what I can see is that that statue is probably a good place for me to funnel things in. In between these two buildings might be a good spot unless they get destroyed by a charger. But like right here, I know I'm pretty good to just, well, there's, there you go, got blown up by a charger. So I'm instead going to move to get to something else that's going to give me that kind of a choke point that I'm really looking for. I first really have to deal with that charger because he might mess me up pretty bad. But you see, like right here, I don't want to use the flamethrower because they're all spread out. They're all kind of like making a semicircle around me. So instead of pulling out the flamer, I'm just going to rip into him with the breaker incendiary, keep backing up until I can get this building on my left side and get them all to funnel in again. Now that all those little critters are dead, I can go back in. By the way, I did not press reload there, y'all. My gun just reloaded itself. I was really annoyed that I just lost a whole magazine for nothing. And of course, as in all my videos, I gotta beat something to death. We kill all the little scavengers, deal with this warrior, and I'm just gonna kinda hang out. And I'm waiting for my next patrol to come in. I see there's that Bile Titan. And uh, given my recent experiences with them not frickin' dying when I need them to... I'm trying to be real careful with this one, but he gets stuck on a rock, so I shoot him. And as soon as the Bile Titans aware of you, they do this like roar. That's how you know that they're coming for you. So I'm going to wait, because I remember last time I threw it, they just kind of took a weird path, and they, I wasn't able to hit him. So I get nice and far away, and I chunk it under him, but I immediately know that that's not far enough. I did not throw that far enough to kill him, and so I'm going to have to throw another 500 kilo at him eventually, but... I'm sorry y'all, my aim's just a little bit off and it's a little finicky. I kind of wish they'd, they'd increase the radius of the 500 kilo just by a little bit. Y'all didn't miss much, everything else is dead, it's just me and this Bile Titan. I tried killing him with a resupply, it hit his leg but still didn't take him out. So I'm just running around the flagpole trying to figure out how to kill this stupid thing. I see a hunter patrol come in so I wipe it out with the incendiary breaker, pretty much one mag. Another bug breach gets called in, so I'm just going to do something that might surprise y'all. I'm going to just ignore that Bile Titan. He can't vomit anymore. He keeps getting hung up on that cliff because their they're walking pattern's a little weird. Sometimes they can't get over stuff. So I'm going to use this opportunity while he's just fiddle farting around over there to just burn everything to death that's in front of me. But again, because I'm in that kind of wide open space, I relocate, I retreat from that position, and I get behind something more solid. And I make this charger bonk into this uh, this part of the map, kill him off real quick, and I notice this is a great little choke point to funnel them all in through. So I'm going to stand up here on a little bit of high ground and just kind of let loose with the flames. Just barbecue them up. Good eating tonight at the base, boys and girls. But we get all these flames going on that's ticking down, doing damage. Whenever I run out of fuel, I back up, run away while I reload, since this isn't a stationary reload weapon. You reload on the move. Always a good decision. As soon as you run out of ammo, just, you know, start running while you reload. I see another hunter patrol, and I know that if I just fire a mag from the breaker at him, it'll kill at least 75% of them. And I, this is where I realized, y'all, that I went way too far from the flag. Because I noticed, where is the flagpole? Oh, it's that tiny little nub of a flagpole right there. And this was a big disheartening moment for me because if y'all notice the clock it's getting pretty low and i really wanted to full clear this map so i have to take out this bile titan post haste and i was willing to die for it i don't know i didn't intend to get killed right there i was trying to bait him into stomping around and i just his back leg brushed me and it killed me but he's finally fucking dead and i can finally sit here and wait for the glorious flag of super earth to go to its full muster I grab up my stuff, and I just kind of park it. I just wait and see what comes. See another patrol coming in, so I just bathe them in the democratic fire of my breaker incendiary. Another bug breach gets called in, so we throw that orbital gas strike. And this actually right here is a perfect example of why the gas strike is so good, y'all. 
And remember, on this particular mission, I have the orbital scatter modifier, so like it doesn't land exactly where I wanted it to. But just with that gas track and a couple of mags from the from breaker incendiary, the whole bug breach is already dead. You see how it's already stopped? I mean, it might have been a smaller bug breach. I don't know if that's really a thing, but. Two magazines of a breaker incendiary and an orbital gas track just took out an entire bug breach. I'd say for a stratagem that has an 80 second cooldown with a 20 second duration, that's really fucking strong, y'all. So if you haven't been using the gas track in your games, please do. It is definitely worth a shot. For any of you that have stuck around this long and you've been getting tired of me whiffing against Bile Titans, I'll just let you watch this one. Enjoy. I'll be honest, y'all, when I heard democracy's dignity has been maintained, I felt so frickin' proud I just wanted to explode. I'd never heard that line before, and it just tickled me in the right way. But we made it to the next primary objective. This is the last little flag raising that we're gonna have to do. But since I came in during a sandstorm, I kind of learned from my previous mistakes. I'm just gonna go around and kill whatever I can at very close range. I don't want these bugs to just be using their stupid bug senses to sniff me out while I'm waiting for this stratagem to go off, so I don't go after every little blip I see on the radar until the sandstorm is done, because I can't really plan out what I want to do when I can't see anything. Like, I can't use what I've been talking about with finding terrain, making funnels, that kind of stuff. So I just skipped ahead to when the sandstorm is done. I see a massive patrol walking in. And since usually once you engage a patrol, if a bug breach is going to be called in, it's, you know, going to happen nearby, I figure I'd throw out the orbital gas track before tossing some flames at these chargers. I was kind of surprised that the charger could go through the flag of Super Earth without getting bonked on the head. kind of feel like that should be the case. I mean, democracy is stronger than these dumb animals anyway. But now I've got two chargers and a bug breach on my ass. And I'm starting to get ragdolled around. That guy almost kills me with his big old stomp. So I need to relocate. This is not a good place for me anymore. I got two chargers right in front of me. And I need, and the bug breach is going on, so a bunch more enemies are going to be showing up. So I back up a little bit. I notice these chargers are not charging. So I can safely kind of walk up and just end their life real quick. And the other one comes through the flames and takes me for a little bit of a ride, skirts me under his butt, but I'm able to stem and run the hell away, because that was really dicey. I did not like having a bunch of hunters on top of me with a charger trying to eat my face. So I see another hunter patrol coming in, as always, deal with it with the incendiary breaker. This weapon is, I don't know, I'm in love with it just because it kills hunters better than anything in the game. If I find another weapon that can do this as well, I will showcase it in the next one. But for now, we got the Breaker Incendiary. And this charger who punted me beneath the earth. I, I don't know. I guess that guy's just particularly strong or something. He doesn't feel like a normal charger. So I'm just going to dodge him this time like a normal person rather than trying to dive out of the way. And I'll finally be able to cook him up after way too long of a time. With both chargers dead, I feel a lot less pressured in the current situation, but learning from my previous mistakes, I'm very well aware that that flag of super earth has descended again. So I'm going to need to barbecue these guys up quick, but more importantly, I need to get near that flagpole. I see this hunter patrol coming in, so I'll wipe it out real quick, just one quick mag and we're good. And then I'm just looking for the flagpole, I kind of forgot where it was, but you know, using this cliff is my, to my advantage making all these bugs walk up, deal with this brood commander real quick. And I think as soon as him and his friends are dead, I'm gonna turn around and look for the flagpole. To save y'all a little bit of time and a little bit more of my dignity, I did spend like a minute and a half just crouched behind that rock letting the flagpole go up, but mostly because if you'll notice, the clock is getting real, real low and I still have a bunch of crap I need to do. So I'm trying to avoid the enemies as much as I can at the moment. It kinda pains me to do that, but I am constrained by the clock at this point, and honestly, y'all, I think that time I spent just dicking around with those Bile Titans, it really cost me this run. It, oh, I don't worry, I still full clear the map, but it, it really impacted the run in a way you'll see later on. So now that Super Earth's flag has been raised once again, we're going to kill anything that's fast and can chase us. We don't want anything following us while we're running away. I see that Bug Breach getting called in, Bile Titan on my left. 
So I'm just going to try to retreat. This is not a good place for me to fight. I don't have time to fight even if I wanted to. So I'm going to run up this cliff and I hope that the next bug hole is going to be up here. Thankfully, Liberty smiled on me and it was. And it's not a giant bug hole either. So this should be relatively easy to clear out. I'm still trying to get all the bugs' attention so I can funnel them up through this one little choke point and hopefully get them to all burn to death with the flamer. But right here I make a crucial error. That hunter popped my shield. And instead of respecting that and running away, I just tried to use the flamethrower again and I got horribly murdered. That one was completely on me. That was a very avoidable death. It was very unfortunate that I died there, but I hope y'all can learn from that. I brought the shield pack because it allows me to stand and fight without having a random hunter just completely interrupt my game plan. But right there, once I saw the shield break from that hunter, I really should have turned around and used my breaker incendiary to get enough space, buy enough time for the shield pack to come back up. But since there's a Bile Titan and a bunch more crap coming in, I do really need to kill this bug nest quick, because I only got two minutes left. So I run through the fire and flames through all the beasties that I see, and I'm just going to book it. I'm getting the fuck out of here because I still have an artillery position to deal with and a stalker den before I can extract, and I've only got two minutes to do it. So I'm very crunched for time. I do not have time to play with these stupid Bile Titans anymore, and I got to get going. I did come across this smaller bug nest, thankfully. I noticed it on my radar, so I'm just going to come over here and deal with this real quick. This is just a quick grenade pistol shot, hopefully. And I'll be fine. I do still have a Bile Titan chasing me from earlier. I was only able to kill one of them. So I do have to be mindful of that. I'm listening for the sound cue of whenever he vomits. I want to be aware of it so I can get out of the way. And also know that the vomit from the Bile Titan will kill his friends. So I can try to line it up so he's doing friendly fire damage. And I'm going to be okay. Now right here, the only reason I'm shooting these flames out is I want the fire to be on the ground so that anything that runs through it gets, you know, set a lot and I can kind of thin out the herd a bit. But I do need to keep making my way out of this area, so I throw down that orbital gas track and I go in to deal with this artillery position. I've only got 30 seconds left, but I will have three minutes for Pelican 1 to come do the emergency evac. So I'm having like three extra minutes to finish off this mission. I grab my resupply and I see that stalker. As soon as I see that stalker, I know I'm too close to the nest to be able to do this effectively. There's going to be more patrols coming, and I really can't do the artillery until I deal with that stalker nest. So, another sandstorm comes in, we march our way through it, we find that stalker nest, and we take this sucker out with a quick shot from the grenade pistol. Now, I would pick up these samples, y'all. I'm real sorry, but I'm out of time. I got two minutes before Pelican 1 leaves me for dead. And, you know, since since I want to get out, I'm going to run for it. I hope none of y'all believed me there. There is no way in hell I'm leaving this planet without killing everything and clearing every objective. So I make the executive decision of I'm not leaving this planet. I will die here, and that is okay. Because Super Earth will have some artillery ready for him, and all the other bug nasties have been dealt with. So I use the artillery trick that I talked about in my last video, uh, which you can check out here if you'd like. But uh, basically the way you can do it is, as you're picking it up, pull out your primary weapon. It will fling the shell a great distance. Makes this a lot easier to do. So I get that dialed in, and I'm going to go march into the desert, find a good place to fight until I am dead. Because, unfortunately, y'all, we're not making it out of this one alive. But that's okay, because we killed a lot of bugs while we're doing it. Well, y'all, that's the run. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you've made it all the way to the end, thank you sincerely. I always like seeing people make it all the way to the end of my videos. Just tells me that you've been enjoying the content and that it was engaging enough for you to stick around. Coming up next, I got one more build to show y'all with the auto cannon against the bugs. But after that, we're going back to fighting the bots. And I'm going to be showing y'all how to stealth through a hell dive mission. I think a lot of you that are trying to break into a solo play will enjoy it. If that sounds good to you, drop a subscription and stay tuned for more. Until next time, Commissar Kai, signing out.